Today we're going to talk about the Lap Dancer external faceting arm, which you see mounted here. We have a table beside our Covington 12 inch flat lap, and we have it basically mounted to that table. The faceting arm moves up and down so you can move your pieces to the flat lap grinder and facet it. Extremely quick and easy. And today we're going to show you both how to mount your marble and facet a marble using the lap dancer and show you how incredibly simple it really can be. So you'll see we have our setup here where I have my dop and it's set into our little jig that's used for uh, mounting your dops both for their first attempt at faceting. And then if you actually had this one faceted already and you wanted to turn around, remove it and facet the other side, that's what this jig is for here because then you can actually put a second dop into this, lower it down and it would center that second dop onto your already faceted piece and you could remove that dop and then facet the opposite side of your marble if you wanted to. But for today, we're just gonna attach our marble to our dop for our first facet set here on the front of the marble. And the very first thing you really want to do is to make sure that your marble is really, really clean. If you have anything on the glass here and you're trying to attach your dop to it, as you're working, there's a very good chance it could pop off. So I'm gonna take a little bit of acetone here and I've already sprayed a little bit on this cloth. And I'm just gonna wipe down the back of my marble really well, just to make sure there's not anything on the back of that surface that's gonna interrupt my epoxy joining the marble to my dop. To attach our marble to the dop, we're just gonna use a really quick set hardware store five minute epoxy. Now you can use a five minute epoxy, you can use dop wax, uh, anything like that's gonna work well for attaching your marble to your dop. And with your epoxy, I'm going to apply some around the area of my dop. And then I'm also going to apply it to my marble on the back side. And even though it's a five minute epoxy and it, and it cures relatively quickly, You'll still want to, after you mix this and apply it to your marble and your dop and patch the two, probably give it an hour or so uh, just to make sure it is well attached. Last thing you want is your marble coming off as you're trying to facet it. So. Now that we have our marble attached to our dop nicely here, we're gonna to wanna to now attach it to our lap dancer. Now this is the end of our lap dancer. You can see we've got the threaded end here and a little lock nut here. So we're gonna thread our dop onto our lap dancer. And you wanna thread it all the way until the metal hits the glass. You wanna do about halfway through the dop, maybe three quarters. And then we're gonna use our lock nut here to tighten that. And you wanna use a wrench to really tighten down that lock nut. Because you don't want this shifting while you're actually working on your piece, otherwise it's gonna shift and change your angles. So you wanna make sure it's nice and tight on here and isn't gonna shift at all when you're starting to grind on the lap dancer on your flat lap. Now that our dop is on there, we can line up on our flat lap where we want it. And you can see here that we're a little bit close to the center. I wanna try and bring this back a little bit so I'm grinding more in this area of my disc. Now on our lap dancer here, you'll see we've got this little screw here. This is actually what tightens the arm adjustment. So I can loosen this screw a little bit. And I can shift the arm back so that my marble is actually a little bit closer to the edge of my disc. Make sure to re-tighten this again because you don't want your arm shifting as you're grinding. So you wanna re-tighten this. Thumb tight is fine. You don't need to use a wrench or anything. Just tighten with your fingers just to make sure your arm isn't adjusting sliding back and forth as you're grinding. Now to set your actual height and your first face angle, you wanna go ahead and put a diamond disc on here. So I'm gonna move my marble out of the way. I'm gonna put my 325 grit diamond disc down on my lap grinder. Then I can set my marble back on here. You'll see exactly the area that it's gonna grind on the discs. So that works really well right there. 
So once I set that, I can then go take a look at the actual face angle on my lap dancer. Now you'll see on the lap dancer here, this is where you're gonna set your face angle, which is where your first tier of facets is gonna be. And you can see my little mark here is about at about 15 degrees. That's not bad, that's actually kind of where I want it. So I don't really have to adjust this one right now. But what I will do is you'll take a look underneath the facet arm here. You've got two screws here. This top one you use to adjust the height of your face angle by shifting the lap dancer up and down on its shaft. The second one here is actually going to be the lock nut. So that's gonna lock this in place because again, as you're grinding, you don't want your, your facet arm to actually shift up and down at all. You want it to try and stay exactly where it is. So once I've set my level, which I'm happy with that, I'm gonna take this set screw here and tighten that down against my height adjustment. So that's gonna make sure that this does not shift up and down at all as I am grinding. With the online calculator, we're going to select three tiers for our facets, our 30 angle selector, and hit next. For my first tier of facets, I want 12 angles. My second tier, I want an offset of 12. And my third tier, I want six angles. Once I hit continue, the online calculator will give me all the angles that I need for each tier. So it makes it a nice little cheat sheet to be able to do your angles quickly. Now that we have all our angles from the calculator for our angle selector, we've got our three different tiers, one, two, and three. And I've used this little whiteboard here to copy down all my angles that I took from the calculator online. Because of course, you don't want your computer sitting right next to your lap grinder. So and you can see on the angle selector on the back here, you can see all my angles. And on the front of my facet arm down here, this screws and unlocks and locks my angle selector. So I'll loosen that. And on the back here, this is spring loaded. So you can see this pulls out and you can shift to change to your next angle. Lock it back in. Screw this down tight again and it locks your angle selector in place. So I'm starting with a 325 grit, and the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna make sure my angle selector is on zero. So I'll loosen my angle selector lock, turn this until my angle is actually on zero, tighten this back up so I know I'm starting in the correct place. So I've got my face angle set here, I've got my zero degree angle, facet angle set there. So I'm gonna start up my grinder. Wet down my disc a little bit. Now I'm starting with my zero degree angle for my very first facet. I'm only gonna do a couple of swipes back and forth. And you wanna try and count the swipes so you know each facet will end up being the same depth on the glass. So I'm gonna do about two or three swipes on this real quick. Bring it up and check it. And that's probably a pretty good depth. I'm going to loosen my angle selector lock, move from my zero to my 30 degrees, lock my angle selector back, and do the same movement. So now I'll loosen my angle selector again and move to my 60 degrees, and the same movement again. follow that through for all 12 facet angles for this first round. And you should be able to see now I've got all these little facets going all the way around my marble. Now they're not exactly touching yet, but I've also got another step to go with my smoothing pad, the resin pad. So these will get a little bit wider. It's all aesthetically what you want. If you wanted much larger facets there, you could. I'm going to a little bit of a smaller one on this marble, so once I go to my smoothing pad and I'll show you that once that's done, you'll see that these are gonna blend into one another a little bit more than they currently are. With such a small surface area, you can actually move from that 325 electroplated straight to a 600 grit resin diamond smoothing pad. This is a pre-polished pad. It's gonna prep that surface so it's gonna be really easy to polish. Now the routine is the same. I've got my marble heel all set. I'm gonna make sure my angle selector is again starting at zero degrees. So we're gonna start at the exact same place. And the routine is exactly the same. I'm gonna count the number of swipes for each one to make sure every facet stays the same size. So 
So let's get this started. I'm gonna wet down the pad, get just a little drip of water going. And then again, do probably four swipes or five. This is gonna increase the size of my facet so they get a little bit larger and they touch one another. It's also gonna make sure that I get rid of any scratches that are apparent in here. Another nice thing to do is if you really want to double check, you have a flashlight handy and clean off every facet after you're done and use a flashlight to make sure you are removing the scratches from your 325 grit when you go to your 600 grit resin. These are such small surface areas here that I'm not gonna be overly concerned with that. They should clean up pretty easily and they should polish pretty fast. So we're gonna do the same routine. I'm gonna change my angles all the way around, do about five or six swipes on this to make sure all my facets are about the same size when they end up, and then we'll have a pre-polished surface. It may be a little bit harder to see now, now that the pre-polish step is done, as they're gonna blend a little bit, but my facets are a little bit larger and they're touching, so they're bigger facets, as that 600 grit smoothing pad did enlarge all these facet areas. That's about right where I want it. Uh, now I can move to the polish stage on this and we'll polish this first tier of facets. And here I'm gonna use an LP66 pad with an extruded urethane material that you use with cerium oxide to accomplish the polish really doesn't do anything on its own, it's just a carrier for the polish. I'm going to do the same routine here. I'm going to start my grinder, a little bit of water to get it moist, and just set this on a steady drip. Doesn't require much water, just enough to keep the pad moist. Now I've got some cerium here in a little squirt bottle that I have shaken up, and what I'll do is I'll squirt a little bit of cerium in the middle of the pad here, and then the same sort of thing with my facet arm, making sure I start again on zero degrees. I'm gonna move this back and forth several times. Now on the polish stage, you don't have to worry about changing the size or shape of the facet. So you'll wanna stay on this a little bit longer than your four or five swipes that we did before. I'm probably gonna do about 10 to 12 swipes to make sure I polish each one of these surfaces really well. You're not gonna really change the sizing of this at all. You just wanna make sure that you get the areas polished and they polish well. So. Again, I'm going to take a little bit of cerium, squirt it onto my pad, and then make several swipes. Every so often you can pick it up, see if you've got some cerium on there. It's a little milky white still, you can see. I'm still good. I don't need to add any more cerium. I'm going to make a couple of more swipes here to get this first facet polished to give you an idea of what it's like. Now the fun part is I've got my piece up here and you may be able to see the kind of slightly hazy pre-polished facets there. And then my first little facet that I polished is right there. And if I move out of the way, you can see it's reflecting the light right nicely from our studio lights here. So you can tell that surface is nicely polished because it is acting almost like a mirror for our studio lights and reflecting the light from that clear polished facet, whereas these decided that are still pre-polished stage are not. So I'm going to follow the same routine, change my angle selector every time for my different angles all the way around and polish the entire first tier of these passes. now that these are all nicely polished you will be able to see as the reflection moves along some of those facets so that's my first tier of facets now it's always a good idea as you're polishing to go through with a flashlight and check and make sure you're getting out all the little scratches and everything is nice and clear you don't want to have to go back over and over and repolish and if you change the face angle on the facet arm, you cannot get back to this same facet angle to repolish these. So you really do wanna make sure and double check all of these facets to make sure they are nicely polished before you move on to the next tier and change the angle on your lap dancer. Now that I've finished my first tier of angles, I'm gonna change the face angle on my lap dancer so I do my second tier. 
So I've again got my marble on my 325 grit disc here so I can figure out what my next face angle is going to be. So I'll loosen the lock nut on the bottom here. I'm gonna move this real quick. And I think I'm gonna go up to around 40. So without leaving that on the disc so it doesn't scratch up my marble, I'm gonna slowly raise my lap dancer up. And you can see here, it's just this one nut here that we're gonna use to raise the height of my lap dancer. Let's see where I am. About at 40. I think I'll take that up to 40. 40 sounds like a good angle for that. Keep raising that up. And if you'll notice, as I've raised this up, my marble is moving closer and closer to the edge. So we're going to go back to our little thumb screw here, loosen it up so I can move my facet arm a little bit more toward the center of the disc, retighten it again, and I'm going to check my height. And then, of course, raise my face angle. So I'm actually at about 45 degrees. I think I'm going to leave it there at 45. So now that I have that at 45 degrees, I'm going to want to take my lock screw here, move it all the way up. So I can lock in place. So I don't want my facet arm to shift as I'm working and change my facet angles. Again, the first thing I'm going to do, loosen up my angle selector lock, make sure I'm starting in the correct degrees, this time on 15 degrees instead of zero degrees to have an offset 12 facets. I'm going to do the exact same number of swipes again, starting with my 15 degree angle. So once I've done my initial facet, I'm going to loosen my angle selector lock, move to my next degree on my list, and do the same number of swipes. Now you can hopefully see here my second tier of angles. They're offset for my first set of facets, which you can probably see here. And there's my new second set of offset 12 facets off of my 325 grip. We'll follow the same routine now, move to my 600 grip pre-polish resin pad, and we'll do all 12 of these on the pre-polish. Uh, it should be completely pre-polished there, but we'll take a closer look to make sure. Again, you want to make sure that you've gotten all these scratches out, and if you haven't, you need to go back and do every facet again so they stay the same size before you move on to any other step. So you can see my second tier of facets done on my pre-polish. You can see those facets are a little lighter looking. They're not quite as white. They're a little semi-translucent almost. And you can see my other polished facets still underneath. So now we'll move on to our polish stage and polish this second tier of facets. So it should be finished with all of our tiers, all of our facets on the second tier. And you can see I've lowered my facet arm all the way down and retightened my thumb screw. And my marble's still kind of on the edge of the grinder. That's perfectly fine. It's still more than enough room to grind with. So I'm good there. So I've started again with my 325 grit disc and we're gonna do our final set angle tier. And there's only six angles on that. So I'll start that right now. And if you go into the even steeper angle, the lap dancer also comes with an arm extension that screws onto the end here. So you can get a little bit further out and get a little more toward the middle of the disc. I didn't bother putting it on this time just because I can still reach the edge of my disc, which is perfectly fine. Because that way, I'm utilizing my entire disc quite nicely. And there you can see 
my final tier with my six angles on the side you can see some of the polished first and second tier of facets we'll finish this off in the same routine the 600 grit resin smoothing pad and then a final polish Now we removed our marble from the lap dancer. You can see I've got all three tiers. You hopefully see that in the video. Three tiers of facets on our marble here. You get some really nice reflections and refractions. It really changes the optics of the marble and does a really nice job. It's just gorgeous. And super fast and super easy. I'll just use a torch to take the epoxy off of the back of this. Since this is a Boro marble, you could also just soak this in acetone and it'll take it off. And in probably about an hour and a half, I have three tiers of some really nice facets on this marble with the lap dancer using a 12 inch Covington grinder. You can also do that on an eight inch grinder, pretty much any lap grinder. Uh, it just makes that lap dancer extremely versatile.